Hey guys, see Drama Invasion here. First off, happy New Year's or happy belated New Year's to people from the other half of the world, but for us North Americans who are celebrating at home. Um, shout out to you. Okay, let's just jump on into it. This week we had loads of dramas that aired and as well as those celebrational New Year's posters that released new materials for Chinese New Year's. Make sure to subscribe, comment, and like this video. And let's just jump on into it for some dramas that will be airing this week. The first one is airing on January 24th. It's called Turn on the Right Way of Life. It's a romance life drama about people in their 40s. There will be different um, types of couples, family dynamics, issues, etc. So we have Huang Bo and Mei Ting as the main leads, as well as Rong Zhe Shan, who you might know from The Bad Kids, in a supporting role. Then we have Viva Femina. This is a drama starring Yin Tao and Jasper Liu. It's a modern female-centric plot romance, of course, and it airs on Aichi and Zhejiang TV on January 25th. And the last drama is For the First Time in My Life, also a female-centric drama that spans different eras. So we have 1993, storyline 2008, and 2022. The three female leads are played by Wang Zhiwen, Tang Yixin, and Mo Li Wu. Victoria Song and Chen Xingxiu's drama Our Interpreter wrapped up filming and released new posters. Now on to the section about the dramas that release new posters for Chinese New Year's. We'll start with the costume dramas and move on to modern ones later on. So the first one is Love You Seven Times. It stars Yang Chaoyue and Ding Yuxi. This is one that I've been waiting for a while. It's a Shansha, and I don't know, the costumes look great. Next is an Ai Chi Yi and Lin Mon Pictures costume drama called A Journey to Love, starring Liu Shishu and Liu Yuning. I'm just so excited and desperate to see a Liu Shishu drama mainly a costume drama because she is one of those actresses that got me into Chinese drama land and I know a lot of older fans of maybe Scarlet Heart or Bu Bu Jingxin can relate. This one looks like they have a good budget and that the fight choreographies and stuff would look really cool. I really hope that they do put out a trailer soon. Then we have A Romance of Twin Flower. This drama stars Ding Yuxi and Peng Xiaoran, and it's a Tencent production drama. Tencent is hit or miss, but when they hit, um, usually it's quite popular. And this one looks like they do have a decent budget too. Um, there's just so many shanshas on these types of lists that I'm anticipating, but we'll have to see if they actually release them because we all know it gets pushed back and back and back. And then for some reason, like we're in 2024 and we only have like three or four shanshas of the year from the like 10 or 20 that they promise which totally sucks, but it's just Chinese drama land and how it works for you. There's really no like set deadline. And I remember there's dramas that were delayed like right before the air date. Anyways, Yang Chaoyue and Ding Yuxi seems to be on a roll. Um, and if their dramas get released back to back, it could be like they might be the new big faces of 2023. So Yang Chao Yue's other drama is Changzhe, and this one stars Shu Jingxi, or Jeremy Shu, as the male lead. Similar to a lot of Shan Sha's, this is a reincarnated lover's story with forbidden love. He was her immortal teacher, but they went through a lot of lifetimes because of a prophecy that foretold that she might become a demon. Speaking of demons and immortals, another Shansha is Till the End of the Moon. This one has been heavily debated when it will air. So at first they're like at the end of January, February, which could still be a possibility. But um, right now we're seeing vaguer interpretations of just quarter one. So any time from the first four months of the year. And one reason why so many people are anticipating this is because Bai Lu and Long Yunxi have worked together in a successful romance drama called Love is Sweet before. 
and their chemistry was sizzling there. So everyone's excited for this story. Bailu's character plays a disciple who is tasked with going back into the past and basically ending the male lead, which is going to become a demon king who wipes out the world before that happens, so before he awakens his power. But of course, she starts to catch feelings for him and things get complicated. And the last of the costume dramas is one called Back from the Brink. It stars Neo Ho and Zhou Ye. This is a drama about a man who has an immortal form of an ancient dragon. He was betrayed, wounded, and heartbroken by a woman that he loved who stole part of his form. So they said some bones and he basically gets trapped. He encounters a female lead who has a hand in helping him escape and they go on an adventure to retrieve his bones and confront his ex-lover. So this is a little bit of a mix between the Shansha fantasy genre and Wuxia with their journey to um, retrieve the bones. So you're gonna get some action, some adventure, a little bit different from all these demons, gods, and deities stuff. Oops, I think I was missing one. So it was Wrong Carriage, Right Groom. And this is a Yuku production. It's a rom-com web drama starring Tian Shi Wei and Al Rai Pang. I think the title speaks for itself what type of drama this will be. And the next drama is The Shadow. This is a Republican fantasy romance drama starring Van Gogh Gao and Ouyang Nana. So I know a lot of people have been excited for this because it sounds so unique. I mean, you have a thousand year old vampire and the female lead has visual impairness. So she's like partially blind. Like that alone just sounds leagues better. And like these characters actually have some depth to them compared to so many of these typical trope filled dramas. The posters look good. Let's just cross our fingers that it actually will be good. As for the modern drama section, we have an Aichi light rom-com countryside setting drama, Romance on the Farm, starring Jing Shi and Tian Shi Wei. I've noticed that they're releasing all of these Tian Shi Wei dramas probably because she surprisingly did very well after New Life Begins. Next are two Zhang Chu Shi dramas. The first one is called Rising with the Wind, starring Gan Jun, Zhang Chu Shi, and Wu Xuan Yi. It's a drama that follows a bunch of people who are trying to build their business from the ground up. And her other drama is The Farthest Distance, starring her and Zhang Yunlong. The male protagonist is an emergency doctor, while the female protagonist is a interior designer. They meet due to a renovation house reality TV show. Honestly, the posters look so good. The posters look so good. They look great together. And I feel like Zhang Chushi has been slowly improving her acting skills. So that's great. And Zhang Yunlong is just so good, especially in these roles. I think he was paired up with Lee Chin. I forgot the drama, but there was like a love triangle moment and I was totally in love with his character. So he was also a doctor there. Looking forward to this one. And last but not least, we have Stories of Youth and Love starring Yang Zhe and Fan Cheng Cheng. This is a coming of age drama that follows a group of youths that grow up in the 90s. I'm going to sneak one in since I'm editing, but I missed one. And it was Nothing But You starring Wu Lei and Zhou Yu Tang. On to the Doban Nu section, we have two dramas that was scored eight which is a lot for them this is basically a normal nine because most of their dramas are like rated from six to seven so the first one is not a surprise for me it's three body i mean the amount of anticipation and that production looks so good i haven't had a chance to watch it yet did you guys watch it and let me know your thoughts in the comments below i've just been so busy i literally have no time to watch anything and I probably won't until February, but I'll still try to get a wrap up in for you at the end of the month. Three Body is a sci-fi mystery drama. And the other one is at 8.7, which might be even the highest that I've seen 
in a long time so i think last year in like their top rated ones it was like 8.5 was the most but this is the knockout which stars Li Yi tong and jang yi this is a police procedural crime drama which was something i already had my eye on but after seeing this it definitely bumps it up the list and last but not least in celebrity news is jackson wang who accepted a fan's invite to just hang out as a guest in their house which is just so sweet and definitely rare so netizens are were raving about this and how he has such good manners and respect how he really loves his fans and wants to get to know them on a human level aside from just like you know giving them hugs or taking a quick photo with them he actually took his time and just hung out there was a photo that was floating around where he was just um after rehearsals and stuff he went straight to their house and he was just sitting in a circle chatting with everybody he seems like a very humble and caring person that's very considerate of everybody even on interviews when i see him he's always asking interviewers like their thoughts their opinions as well so it's not just one way congrats to the lucky fans i guess and that wraps it for this video it's been a while since we did any emoji game so if you're new here we just um choose an emoji well i choose an emoji and then you guys can put it down in the comments below so i know if you watch the video all the way so emoji of today maybe i don't know if there's lanterns emojis or anything with red because red is a huge color um, of luck for us asians especially during celebrational months like now so you can comment um, any red emojis any yellow will do as well and life updates for anybody who's been wondering like where are these first impression videos we want to see your thoughts on all these new dramas well unfortunately i've just been you know stuck with work and also school assignments i'm doing my last semester so just so many things to do um i'm doing like a work study program so lots of assignments and projects they're all due in the beginning week of february so i'm pretty sure i can catch up and have some more time to relax in february so leave your comments and recommendations i'll keep tabs on those dramas and i'll definitely try to check them out next month but for now i still have some dramas that i've completed like song of the moon that i'll give a final reviews on at the end of the month take care have a wonderful week and I'll see you guys in the next video.